Why in your mind is forgiveness important? If you can't find forgiveness in your heart, especially if you're a Christian, mm -hmm. and knowing that God forgives us every single moment, gave His only Son mm -hmm. to take away all of our sins and the mm -hmm. ultimate forgiveness, then I don't know if you can truly have a full heart because you're always going to have this pain inside of you, but you're only painting yourself. You're mm -hmm. only hurting yourself. Mm -hmm. So forgiveness is so important. And as much as we talk about, and it's been well said, that forgiveness is not about the other person. Forgiveness is for you. Hi, I'm Eric Weir, and thanks for joining me in another episode of Studying Your Way to Success. Today, my guest is uh, Richmond Weaver. He is the host of the Richmond Weaver Fox Sports of the Upstate. So, That's so, right. So so what is this? I've got an Emmy <laughs> before me. It look, it's very exciting. I don't know if you've really seen one, and, and it's it's... It's pretty heavy. So to, to tell me it's about a nice paperweight. Ready. It is. It's, it's what fantastic. It is. Yes. And no. And there, there's a story obviously behind it. Yes. And is an Emmy that I was fortunate enough to earn with a other host of individuals for a docu series that uh, we created called mm -hmm. Clemson's Greatest Games. Okay. Uh, back in 2020, and it highlights 12 of the best regular season games of Clemson football under Dabo Sweeney. Okay. And it came about, obviously, from a perspective of during COVID, mm -hmm. live sports was gone. Right. And we had talked to Clemson with the opportunity, and I'm a Clemson grad, so I've got a, a gravitational pull to Clemson. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I'm very biased to the color orange mm -hmm. uh, from that perspective. But I am big on storytelling, and one of the things that we wanted to do is talk about some of the successes mm -hmm. under Dabo Sweeney and just obviously mm -hmm. Clemson winning national championships, sure. multiple national championships under Dabo Sweeney. But it really didn't go anywhere in terms of the interest from Clemson mm -hmm. until 2020. Then all of a sudden live sports were gone, sponsors and advertisers that had already bought into Clemson Athletics mm -hmm. in terms of viewing and during live broadcast. Mm -hmm. Now all of a sudden that was gone and some of these sponsors were asking, hey, we might need our money back here because mm -hmm. there's no content out there. And then so Clemson came back and said, hey, that idea you had? <laughs> Content's good, right? The content is good. Well, yeah, content yeah. is king. Yeah. And so, but the criteria was uh, we had to have the first episode out in three weeks. <laughs> and it was flying by the seat of our pants and building the plane as we're flying it, basically. And right. So we were able to wow. actually do that, and each week released a new episode that aired in... So it was, like, really on. Oh, it was really on. And it aired in five different areas uh, through Next Star Affiliates, mm -hmm. and Next Star Affiliate mm -hmm. here in Greenville is WSPA, mm -hmm. and then it was throughout uh, the rest of the state mm -hmm. and into Georgia, and... Lo and behold, we earned an Emmy for it. And That's in 2021, <laughs> we got the news, and uh, unfortunately, we because of COVID and the ramifications, there wasn't a live ceremony, so it was all remote uh, oh, ceremony. That's the worst. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> but it's still yeah. an Emmy. And, still an Emmy. That's great. And, and it That's was great. a fantastic achievement, uh, you know, from that standpoint, and obviously something that I'm very proud of. Oh, absolutely. So, so COVID, I mean, it, we, we, we so quickly forget, but it really, it stopped sports all, all together, oh, at, it le did. at least f fans attending. Do, do, is there a, a, a legacy impact or a tale in your mind for, from, from that COVID caused? Yeah, yeah well, I, I think we're seeing a lot of it right now just from a perspective of people are talking about college athletics are changing significantly, and some would say for the worse. And a lot of it has to do with NIL, Transfer Portal. Mm -hmm. But all of this came about at the same time, COVID. And so you had all these rules change and allowing some of these athletes to have an opportunity of having a COVID year. So it gave those individuals an extra year of eligibility. So when you had that combined with the fact that mm -hmm. now they could transfer without any ramifications, they didn't mm -hmm. have to mm -hmm. uh, sit out for a year. Right. 
it's created a different complexion for college mm. athletics. But I feel in a good way. A lot of people feel in a different way. Sure, sure. So there is a legacy that college athletics mm -hmm. is changing mm -hmm. due to COVID mm -hmm. and the changes that happened through the rules that were changed. And so I know that's you know in a very niche type mm -hmm. of mm -hmm. aspect from mm -hmm. that standpoint. But just when you look at sports overall and it, how COVID impacted sports, mm -hmm. I think – America and the world truly understood how important sports are in our lives. Right. Because right. it put us on the brink of the thirst of where are sports? We need sports. And obviously, there's so many parallels between life and sports and what you can learn from sports. Sure. But even just from the perspective of when the Last Dance documentary came out, mm -hmm. talking about the Chicago Bulls mm -hmm. and their last yeah, season there. Right, right. And how, I mean, that was all anybody talked about. And it, it just showed, once again, because live sports was not available at the time. Right, that's true. And so it just showed that everybody was so thirsty for something mm -hmm. with sports. Mm -hmm. And so I think the big thing that I gained out of COVID from mm -hmm. a sports perspective is just knowing that mm -hmm. it is a big part of a lot of people's lives right. in the world. Right. That's fantastic. So so what have you learned? I mean, individually, I mean, you're, you're, you're there at games at the Clemson, you're announcing, uh, you have your own mm -hmm. podcast. I mean, obviously sports are a big part of your life. W what have you learned from sports, would you say? Yeah, sports has been more than just something that I've learned. Sports has been something that has uh, taken me to places that I never would mm -hmm. have dreamed. And my background, coming from a family where I never knew my biological father mm -hmm. and always having these abandonment type of issues. And, you know, my mom and my stepdad battled alcoholism for most of my childhood. Mm -hmm. And I would say my entire childhood, but when I left for college, I mean, it was still an issue, but I was able to escape that mm -hmm. by moving out mm -hmm. and moving on. But sports was where I learned love. Mm. I learned camaraderie. Mm -hmm. I learned about discipline. I learned about teamwork. Mm -hmm. I learned about failure. Mm -hmm. I learned about adversity, but having somebody there to lift you up during that through coaches, through mm -hmm. teammates. Mm -hmm. And so sports, and I know it's very cliche, it was my escape. And basketball was the escape for me hmm. in terms of being able to just have those moments out in the backyard or mm -hmm. just dribbling up and down mm -hmm. the street with a mm -hmm. basketball. Yeah. And basketball was where I gravitated. Mm -hmm. So sports is much more than just a game for me. Oh wow, that's, that's great. So, so if 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 you were talking to somebody, said, "Hey, I I, I like what you're doing. You're, you're an announcer. You're uh, you've won an Emmy. Uh, it's it's exciting. Um, are, do you have any advice for somebody who's you know 17, 18, 19, 20 years old who who, who wants to end up in some form of media? Yeah, the thing that I always say, and because it's so easy to do in any aspect of life, and mm -hmm. we hear the 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 slogan from Nike, just do right, it, right. and how we can try to apply that in our mm -hmm. life. And so I think there's another slogan that I have been using that is within the sports media world, especially if you're looking to start something. And my biggest thing is press record. Hmm. Just start it. Just like you mm -hmm. starting this podcast, just right. press record because right. you don't know where it's right. going to go, but it's sure. the anticipation of – what might happen leads us in a different pathway, mm -hmm. and that fear is what holds us back. And so just press record mm -hmm. is my biggest advice, regardless of where it goes, just, just press, press record. record. It's good. It's good. How do you define success th 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 these days? Oh, that, that's a such a giant question. <laughs> it can go in so many <laughs> different directions. That's why I, asked it, yeah. I know, yes. And you know, I, I think from a perspective of success is and at the end of the day, it is individualized. Mm -hmm. And for one person's success can look very different than another person's success. But I, I think one of the things that I lean on when looking at success, it's just the fulfillment and just the joy and whatever that might be. And so success can be somebody who 
starts a podcast, and that's their success, just being able to start it, where other people, they might, their success is once they get 10,000 downloads mm -hmm. of a podcast. Mm -hmm. So it is different, but I think it's all about the fulfillment and joy that you get through the process. Mm -hmm. And I still truly believe that success is actually just going through the journey and mm -hmm. whatever that might be. Right. Now, if you had, a, you know, one of our taglines is there's no success without setbacks. Oh, yeah. I've always heard, heard that and experienced that myself. Are there any s s setbacks that you could, you could share? And then if so, Look at kind of what what you learned through that. Yeah, there there's various setbacks, and you know I can even again just look to my childhood and not having my mm -hmm. biological father mm -hmm. and never knowing that side of my family until much later in life mm -hmm. I got reconnected awesome. uh, yeah. with that side of the family, and you know that's obviously a, a, a setback just from a perspective of as I mentioned that abandonment mm -hmm. feeling and. Mm -hmm never feeling love and searching for that void that was there. But then, you know, looking at just even from perspective of just life where I was a college basketball coach and I was living my dream after I graduated from Clemson, mm -hmm. spent a year at Fairleigh Dickinson University uh, in Teaneck, New Jersey, mm -hmm. and then a few years at University of Maryland Eastern Shore, low division one schools, mm -hmm. but it didn't matter. I was division one assistant basketball mm -hmm. coach, mm -hmm. living my dream, and our staff got fired at Maryland Eastern Shore. And and as the coaching industry goes, a lot of times a new staff, a new head coach comes in, he's going to bring his own guys. And right. that's just the reality of right. it. Uh, and so that's what happened at Maryland Eastern Shore. And, you know, from my connection at Clemson, being a member of the mm -hmm. basketball team there uh, when I was a student, Cliff Ellis was the head coach. He was now the head coach at Auburn. And so it looked like there was going to be an opportunity where one of his assistant coaches was going to take an, a head coaching job at mm -hmm. a junior college. And so this was my opportunity. Right. I, he, we talked about it. We had met and he said, I've got a spot for you. Don't worry about it. Once Jeff leaves, we'll be good. But once you come on down, work the summer camps and right. start looking for a place to live. And so I did that and with full anticipation that – even though you know I had being fired, our staff being fired at Maryland Eastern Shore, I was going to find my way back at Auburn that summer, and Jeff decided not to take the head coaching job at the oh, junior wow. college, and so now <laughs> that left a, a scenario where I didn't have any options because now it was late and mm. other opportunities that I was exploring they mm. were closed. At this mm. point now. now, And I could have stayed at Auburn as a grad assistant, mm -hmm. but I'd already been out. Mm -hmm. And I didn't want to go back and have to take classes mm -hmm. and not be a full-time mm -hmm. assistant coach. And so pride got in the way. Mm -hmm. And I look back and maybe I should have mm -hmm. stayed there on that pathway with Cliff Ellis, but I didn't. Uh, and, and so that setback as much as it was a setback and it got me out of right. coaching, it led me to the opportunity of getting into med device sales mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. then mm -hmm. having a successful sales career, uh, but always coming back to sports. And that's why I stored, started the podcast, Rich Take on Sports, in mm -hmm. 2017 and having conversations about – uh, the impact of sports with different sports personalities, and it's led me to so many different things. But I, I think, you know, just even looking at the scenario of being fired there, mm -hmm. as, as much as I thought that was so devastating mm -hmm. that how am I going to, you know, come back from that, mm -hmm. it, it, it did push me in different directions. Now, there is a little bit of regret that I have mm -hmm. that I didn't mm -hmm. stay in coaching. So mm -hmm. each year... <laughs> when practice starts for college basketball tough, or the right? final four, yeah. yeah, it's a little tough for me, uh, you know, from that perspective. But it, you know, it did teach me that you know, even in the face of you know the adversity, I, I think you have situations like that where you can either allow that adversity to be excuses, or that adversity can be value, right. and. Each person has that responsibility and that choice. They can make that choice. And I know there's a, a lot of people will talk about, oh, we, my circumstances were different than yours. And so based on you know mm -hmm. my particular 
adverse situation, there's it's different and my choice, I didn't have a choice. Mm-hmm. I still believe everybody has a choice mm-hmm. regardless of how it plays out. And you know, in 2014, my brother was shot and killed. Gee whiz. And wow. so I had that choice at that moment. You know, I could let that be something that pushed me in a different direction, or I could choose not to allow that to impact in a negative way and impact the family in a negative way. Mm. And that's wow. very difficult. Oh, and then especially when the person who, what I say, murdered my brother, he got out of jail. Mm. And because, it, long story, just with the, with the legal system based on manslaughter versus murder, what you have to prove in a court of law, mm. there's differences there. And so I can say that I've had some <laughs> scenarios where I could have easily let right. adversity right. and circumstances turn into those excuses, oh, I can't do this because of that. Right. Sure. But, I, but I chose not to. So I, I think it's imperative hmm. that you know, if you can be disciplined enough to take the responsibility and understand we each have the ability to make those choices. Wow. So, 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 so what motivates you today? I mean, what, I mean, when you get up and you're, is, is there something that's a driving force for you now? <laughs> yeah, just keep going. Keep going. <laughs> that's yeah. it. Another it's, foot you know, in front of the other, right? Yes, exactly. It's I go mean, time, right. Yes, I mean, yeah. I think there's <laughs> an aspect, and in, in Eric, I know you can probably attest to this, there's some days you don't even have time to right. think about right. what is motivating you and what keeps you going. I mean, your it, books, right? <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah, that calendar yeah. does, yeah. or just yeah. the responsibilities that you have as, you know, a father or mm-hmm. as a husband, and you know, even now, me going through a divorce uh, just recently and turning the page, the next chapter. Right. You know, so I, I think for me. What motivates me is still just continuing to find joy in life, and whatever right. that might be, sure. and uh, that's a big part of it. And each day it can be different, mm-hmm. uh, but I, I would have to say I, I, I'm very motivated just from the standpoint of, well, especially when I'm looking at my career side mm-hmm. of things, as far as really focusing back on the things that I love. Mm-hmm. And as well as I did financially in med device sales, I didn't love it. Mm-hmm. And so now I'm just looking for opportunities of things that I want to invest my time in into mm-hmm. things that I love. So right. that's what's motivating me right. each day right now right. is investing the time right. in the things that will, I feel will bring me fulfillment and right. joy through sure. that journey. Right, right. That's great. How did... How did fatherhood, you know, it, it, it change you? I know it changed me, but it's oh, like yeah. it's a it's a it's a big deal. So how, how did that change you? Well, I, I think again, going back to not having you know my biological father. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah it, it, even... So I, I remember when my wife at the time was pregnant, or found out that she mm-hmm. was pregnant, mm-hmm. and this was with our first. And so I've got three kids, and they're they're older now, mm-hmm. and. It hit me that I don't know who the hell I am because mm. I didn't know that side of the right. family. Right, and so I, knowing that, it hit me that well, if I'm going to raise somebody in this world, they need to know who they are, and I can't tell them who they are until I know who I am. Well, wow, that's, that's that's good perspective. And yeah. so I, I did uh, finally really talk to my mom about the history mm-hmm. um, with that and. You know, found out some information, and then was finally able to connect hmm. uh, with my biological grandmother. Oh wow! Yes, and my biological grandfather had already passed away, unfortunately, uh, but I did at least get connected, and so I had that opportunity just to figure out okay who I was. And I'm not saying that that all of a sudden the crystal ball mm-hmm. or mm-hmm. you know a light bulb went off and mm-hmm. i figured everything out about me because mm-hmm. that wasn't it at all but through that process it at least allowed me to start understanding uh, in terms of how impactful forgiveness could be mm-hmm. and you know being able to be in that position where i could fully invest into being a father but i don't think that i started really learning about fatherhood until all three of my kids mm. were 
born. Mm -hmm. And the trials and tribulations, Mm -hmm. it's one thing to have one kid. It's another thing to have two. And then three, I mean, it's, yeah, yeah, zone defense. And I'm not saying that, uh, obviously, you can't change uh, after one kid and what fatherhood can do for you. But I think for me, it really hit me when all three and just the responsibility and understanding how you had to be as a father and guiding each of your kids because they're different. Mm -hmm. And the challenge of that, understanding what makes each one of those kids you know, react in certain ways Mm -hmm. and what's their uh, buttons or Mm -hmm. what's their personality. And that was a big thing for me. Um, And understanding that I needed to be much more patient in life (laughs) And, and, and also being able to understand you can really only control the things that you can control, and that's your attitude and effort. Because as much as I wanted to protect the kids, as much as I wanted to give them advice and say, listen, this is how things are going to play out, they're going to make their own choices, and you can't control that. And I know in this world, this society does seem to be, you know, kind of the helicopter Mm -hmm. uh, parenting technique, and I'm not saying there's a right or a wrong, but I do think there's consequences based on that where you think you can control everything in life. And mm-hmm. obviously, as you know, Eric, you can't. No, no. You just no, can't. No. You can't control that. I mean, from, from your perspective, what about you? I mean, what, what did you learn? Oh, yeah. You, you, you get to the end of yourself. Yeah, so I have I have five. Yeah, see, <laughs> <laughs> so, so, you upped yeah, me there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Someone said, "Are you are you flexible?" And I said, "I am contortable." <laughs> contortable. I like that. Yeah, yes, yeah, yes. Yeah. You do have to be yeah, flexible. Yeah, yeah, but, no get, get, but you get more contortable. Yeah. So no, it helps you. It helps you grow in in in, in so many ways, and I think it's it gives you more perspective, depth of character. Um, it, it reduces selfishness, it exposes any weakness that you have. Yes. And uh, sometimes you see that reflection, and you're like, wow, okay, I know where you got that, right? Yes. So it's, it's, so, uh, it's refining, uh, and then there, it's also, you know, you want to pour in, pour in, and you also understand how maybe uh, when other people poured into you, you may have been a source of frustration or a source of enjoyment or, yeah. or, 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 or being, being, being grateful even. And I think for, for me, the biggest switch was being grateful in those times where you're frustrated, being grateful for, for that. Because I, I uh, had people telling me, like, you're not always going to have a, a handprint on the refrigerator. It may frustrate right. you, but it's not, you'll, you'll miss those one day. Yes, exactly. And, and, and at first, you're like, you know, you're like okay, I guess, I, I guess you will. And, and, and you do. You do. And I'm, I'm very nostalgic. So I see, like, f- I keep photos. And when iPhone shows, like, a year ago or five years ago, I'm always like, oh, man, stop. I send pictures <laughs> to everybody. But that, that, that's how it, 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 you know, that, that's how it is. And my father, when, and I was blessed with it. Father just said family is very important, is number one. And he was my hero. Right, and then trying to be a dad that they could look, that you know that, that I could could represent to my kids was a very big growing experience for me. And then also, like you're saying, letting them not be helicopter, let them do their own thing. Yeah, and and then and be there as support. So it's a uh, it's good. It, it's yeah, really good. and you know the thing deepening. It, it, it oh my goodness, it, deepening from that perspective. I mean, that's an understatement yeah. in, in my opinion. Yeah. And you know, and the things that I. Also learned in terms of also trying to guide my mm-hmm, kids right. and making sure that I wasn't talking down to them mm-hmm. and trying to position things that it was my way, it's the right way, and mm-hmm. that was not what I was trying to do, or that I'm better. Mm-hmm. And I really tried to express, you know, from the perspective of I'm only telling you these things. Goes, it's just a simple fact. I've lived life longer than you, right. <laughs> you know, and that's it. So I've probably experienced yeah. Yeah. more than you have. Yeah. Now we might view it differently. I'm just telling you, mm-hmm. that stove is hot, that's so true. you can touch it if you want <laughs> to. Right. But there's going yeah. to be consequences. Yeah, yeah that's right. <laughs> I, had, I had a pastor that I, I, when I was a kid, he was I was like 10, 13. It was, it was, what he said just kind of resonated. And he said, you know, when I was younger, before I had children, I was going to write a book, you know, 10 sure-fired ways to read, you know, godly, read, 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 yeah. read great kids. And he goes, after having 
several children, and now at this point, I, I'm, I've talked to him. You know, you're, you're, more recently, he goes, "I'd retitle the book three things you might want to try." <laughs> <laughs> I might want to try. Yeah. 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 So I thought, oh, that's fantastic. That's fantastic. Yeah. So, so, you know, how is it? Um, you know, you, you've had setbacks. You've had a successful career in business. Do you learn more from winning an Emmy, or do you learn more from a setback, and why? Yeah, you know, uh, you learn from both. Mm -hmm. You really do. And there's an aspect of even earning this. I mean, there were setbacks throughout mm -hmm. that process. Yeah, three weeks for your first episode. Yeah, and, and right? just, just stay on point after that, right? What we had to do to put it all together. So e even in your successes, you're having failures or you're right. having setbacks. Oh, absolutely. Th th there's no doubt. But ultimately, I, I do believe at the end of the day, you're going to learn more from the setbacks. Mm -hmm. You're going to learn more from the adversity uh, that you're facing because... As Dabo Sweeney has said, the fun is in the winning. I mean, right. everything is great when you're winning, mm -hmm. but as you know, winning is not always possible. And you right. might have wins throughout your career and you're on a upward trajectory mm -hmm. and winning, but mm -hmm. within that path, within mm -hmm. that journey, mm -hmm. there's going to be those setbacks. And I think at the end of the day, that's, you're learning more through those losses because you're trying to dissect what happened, what went wrong, mm. what could you have done better, where winning, I think, can at sometimes lead to some complacency, mm -hmm. where you're not self-reflective mm -hmm. enough, where the adversity does force you into that side of the camp where you do have to dissect and mm -hmm. it might be uncomfortable at times, right. and trying, and especially when you're on a team and you're in an organization, and the entire team is not having success. And so, how can you approach that in, in a way through learning? And w when you look at it, just even from an individual perspective, it's the people that take the time, though, to truly look in the mirror. Those are the ones who take the most out of the adversity mm -hmm. and are able mm -hmm. to utilize that to make the next scenario a winning scenario. How important is owning it and not trying to uh, reflect or put blame on somebody else? I think that is imperative. Mm -hmm. I don't think you can. I don't think you can utilize adversity without taking ownership. And that doesn't mean taking taking it for the team in, in, a, in a way that you're not taking on somebody else's mm -hmm. responsibility of just being the martyr. I'm mm -hmm. not saying that at mm -hmm. all. But I think at the end of the day, the choices that we're making, it's our choices. It's what we're doing. And you have to be able to own that. And that's why I talked about, you know, with adversity, I mean, you can have the adversity and just say that's the excuse, but it could have been a decision that you made that led to a consequence, and you've got to own that and take that responsibility because at the end of the day, it's also your responsibility to make that choice to move in a different direction mm -hmm. if you're not having that mm -hmm. success. Mm -hmm. Wow. You also said something else. You said uh, you forgave your father. Or you had forgiveness. You learned about yes. forgiveness. Yes. I think that's how you praise it. Forgiveness is important. Why, in your mind, is forgiveness important? Because if you're if you can't find forgiveness in your heart, um, especially if you're a Christian, mm -hmm. and knowing that God forgives us every single moment mm -hmm. and gave His only Son mm -hmm. to take away all of our sins and the mm -hmm. ultimate forgiveness, then I don't know if you can truly have a full heart because you're always going to have this pain inside of you, but you're only paining yourself. You're mm -hmm. only hurting yourself. Mm -hmm. And so forgiveness is so important. And as much as we 
talk about, and it's been well said, that forgiveness is not about the other person. Forgiveness is for you. Yeah. It's for you to be free and and move on. And now, yes, it can obviously impact the person or the scenario that might have impacted you. And, sure. you know, going through the forgiveness pathway and forgiving my biological father for not being around. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it was very difficult to understand, especially once I had kids, that, you know, as a father, it was... I couldn't fathom how somebody would choose not to be with their kids. Right. Oh, yeah. You probably felt that in waves, right? Big time. Mm. And now I know, obviously, everybody has their different scenarios and and all of that, but it was very hard for me to understand that. But through some great counseling and, and self-reflection and finding you know, the Word of God and, and leaning on my faith, which I didn't come into my faith until later in life, into my, you know, 30s, almost 40 years old. And so it, just knowing that, you know, understanding that power of forgiveness, I mean, it's such a huge impact. And again, it's, it's more for the person that's been oh, yeah. hurt than it is yeah. for the person that... That might That's have true. done the hurt, but that being able to forgive mm-hmm. my father ultimately led me to being able to forgive the person who killed my brother. Mm. And that's wow. very difficult. That was a very difficult thing to do. And, you know, I, I've talked about it with friends that, you know, it was very difficult to get the phone call from my sister in law that my brother had been shot and killed. But it was extremely difficult, and I thought it was the hardest thing that I, I've ever done in my life was having to call my mom mm. and tell her that and my stepdad mm. and tell them that. But then ultimately, forgiving the man who killed my brother was definitely the hardest thing that I've mm. had to forgive. But I, I've been able to process that and, and have found peace through that forgiveness. It's so wow. powerful. Yeah, that has to be incredibly powerful. Wow. How did you end up being an announcer at, at Clemson? <laughs> it seems like, a, you know, from, you know, medical sales to your Clemson. So how did you do that? Yeah, I, I wish it was just a from A to B and that was it. <laughs> yes, it wasn't a job. Yeah, <laughs> no, yeah. no. Right. It is a meandering right. path. Right. But as I mentioned, you know, sports has been such a big part of my life. I always had this gravitational pull mm-hmm. back to it and then, you know, say 2015, actually maybe even before that, I started trying to really figure out you know, what, what I wanted to do mm-hmm. in, in life. And maybe even a few years before that, as I, I was in med device, and you know, I remember uh, distinctly, it was in med device, and I, was, was in, I would sell spinal implants. Mm-hmm. So it was all the rods, screws, and plates okay. they use yeah. for uh, spine surgery. And you take in these instruments and implants, and they have to be sterilized. Mm-hmm. And so you have these big metal trays that mm-hmm. you have to take into the hospital because hospitals, while they can store some instruments and implants, they just don't have the capacity right. to warehouse all of the right. equipment sure. that they use for surgery. So you bring it in and out. And so I remember I was eating lunch in my car, and I, I was always my routine. I would, I would <laughs> eat lunch in my car. And sometimes, I mean, I'm running in between and surgeries. Call, yeah, right, yes, right, yeah. and so I, I'm sitting there. And I'm getting ready to turn 40 years old. And so maybe this is, you know, that those epiphanies that happen mm-hmm. or whatever, midlife crisis. Mm-hmm. I don't know how you want to describe it, but I was sitting there eating lunch and I see uh, a man walking some instruments in and he's got it on this cart and he's lugging it. And you can tell, I mean, it's heavy. Mm-hmm. And as whitish hair, you know, very gray, looks to be like 65 years old. He mm. might not have been, and but it looked like he was. And it hit me, and I said to myself, man, I don't want to be that guy. <laughs> right. I don't want to be that right. guy. And that's right. not to, to say Denigrate anything guy. bad, mm. because I mean, everybody you know, mm. has their careers, has mm. their choices, and mm. maybe he enjoyed what mm. he was doing. I don't know, but I didn't want to do that. Right. And so I had said to myself, all right, I, I, I don't, 
want to do that. And maybe I want to own my own medical device distributorship. So mm -hmm. I'm not the guy. I can hire a team mm -hmm. of people that enjoy you know, taking right. instruments, right. And, and that's a very minor thing about it. So I did start a medical device distributorship mm -hmm. and moved here to Greenville with the family back in 2012. And as much as I guess that was something that uh, was a distraction, it didn't fill the void of what I was really mm -hmm. wanting to do. And that was sports. Mm -hmm. I wanted to be back in sports. I missed mm -hmm. coaching. I missed being able to have mm -hmm. that opportunity. And I was driving a lot throughout the state with the medical device distributorship and started listening to podcasts mm -hmm. and realized, oh, wow, this is a great mm -hmm. avenue right. to enjoy content. No commercials, because this was in, you know, in 2014, 2015. Mm -hmm. right. Podcasts were really just getting started. Right. And it's obviously a little bit different now with the landscape of podcasts. And you know, I started listening to podcasts storytelling and having mm -hmm. guests and hearing about people's journeys. And so I thought, well, I know sports was a huge part of my life. Mm -hmm. I wonder other people, mm -hmm. do they have similar stories to me? Do they have different scenarios that might mm -hmm. be compelling? You sure. know, why did they you know, right. want to play sports? Right. You know, what did they learn from sports? Right. All of those different things. And so I, I started t thinking, well, maybe I can start mm -hmm. a podcast mm -hmm. and it would be about sports and the impact of sports in people's lives. And so I, I started just thinking about it and doing a little bit of research or whatever. And I had told my wife at the time, you know, what, what I was thinking, but it didn't, it didn't go anywhere. It was just a thought and, but I kept coming back to it. But, in, um, so in 2015, had an opportunity to go to a March of Dimes charity event. And there they had a, uh, a silent auction for opportunity to go to local sports talk show and tour the, a facility and see what it's like behind the scenes in a radio studio. And so I was like, well, okay, I'll try this. So I ended up getting it because I was the only person who bid on it. <laughs> so <laughs> I didn't have any competition. Right. And it was at ESPN Upstate at the time. And it was Mark Sturgis uh, was the uh, sports talk uh, host here in Greenville. And so this now was in February. And before that, Clemson wins the national championship mm. in January right. of uh, 2017. Um, and, and so no, let me get my timeline mm -hmm. correct. Um, so this was in 2016 when I uh, did the March of Dimes event. And so in that January of 2017, that's when Clemson wins the national championship to Sean Watson, mm -hmm. to Hunter Renfro. And my family, we're all – there at the house celebrating and people are saying, this is crazy. And I'm jumping up and down saying, I'm starting a podcast. I'm starting a podcast because right. I realized anything is possible because it was that fear right. was holding me back. Sure. I couldn't press record. And hmm. then a couple of months go by and I still haven't done anything with the podcast, still hadn't done anything. And so then that's when I had the opportunity of uh, touring ESPN Upstate with Mark Sturgis. And now this is uh, the beginning of March of 2017, and Mark Sturgis is asking me about my background, and I'm telling him I used to be a basketball coach and was, was with the Clemson team and all of that, and he says, well, my co-host is it here this week. Why don't you come on for a segment because we're right here at March Madness and we can talk college basketball. And so – we did that, and I ended up staying full two hours and absolutely loved it. And as I was walking out, Mark said, hey, you know, you can come back anytime if you want to talk college basketball or whatever. You're actually you know, pretty decent. Mm -hmm. uh, and I was like, oh, perfect. I love it. And then as I turned, he said, oh, and one more thing. Have you ever thought about starting a podcast? Mm. And I was like, all right, God. I got you. Because I had told nobody right. except right. my wife at the time yeah. that I wanted to do a podcast. Oh, wow. And for him to say that, I knew that that was God's way of saying, all right, here you go. That's great. This is your opportunity. Yeah. And so that was in March. 
May 19th on my birthday, I launched my podcast, Good Rich Take on Sports. Okay. So I pressed record, yeah. finally. <laughs> it so, took me a while, but well. I did. So how do you face fear today? Just confront it. Mm-hmm. Hit it head on. And I think that's... I think when you boil things down for human beings, mm-hmm. I think you can boil it down to the word confront. Mm-hmm. And it's the opportunity to confront what might be ahead of you, because it's easy just to push it away, mm-hmm. just to not deal with it. But can you confront that workout? Can you confront that blank canvas? Can you confront that blank piece of paper? Can you confront that hardest task that you have to do on your to-do list? Right. You know, those, that's, you just have to confront it and you have to make that choice because the anticipation, that's what holds us back Mm -hmm. of that thinking that we're going to fail. And, you know, I think the biggest thing is, is that you just have to make that choice to confront it. And it might not always be easy. And I can tell you, I don't always do that. Mm-hmm. I've found myself and I'm learning about myself. And it's one of the things that I'm trying to get better at is that I procrastinate. Right. And, right. and part of it is because I'm not confronting it. Mm-hmm. But I've found when I do confront it, it goes. It mm-hmm. gets the ball rolling. Right. It gets things moving. Right. And it might not go exactly the way I want, but at least it's moving. Right, right, you know? right. And right, right. That's, that's when I'm, I have found at least the opportunity to recognize when I'm starting to get fearful and I'll make that decision. Okay, today is the day you're making that phone call. You're sending that email, w- whatever it might be. And again, just even you know, from the physical side, you're going to do that workout today. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, yeah, for sure. If you could go back and talk to your 20-year-old self, mm. what would you say? <laughs> Stay in college basketball. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. You know, it's, it's easy to say because it is funny because I still have friends that are coaches, yeah. and uh, you know, I'll see them uh, occasionally, and you know, I'll joke with them. It's like, man, you know, I... Yeah. You're still living it. That's great. Uh, you know, I wish I was, mm-hmm. you know, there, you know, beside you, or, you know, in the arena, so to mm-hmm. speak, uh, still as a college basketball coach. And some of the guys are like, oh, no, man, you made the right decision. Because <laughs> 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 coaching is a tough profession. It's a oh. tough career, oh, it is. especially because you know, there could be times where you're moving. There's a lot of things right. that are, you know, out of your control at times. But, you know, I, I ultimately, though, all, all joking aside, I, I think for me, what I would tell myself at you know being 20 years old is that um, you can't do everything by yourself. There was too many times that I was trying to be Superman mm-hmm. and not allowing others to 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 help and to be part of right. you know my life right. and you know just pushing people away. I, I think that's the biggest thing is that. I mean, life is about community. Right. Life yeah. is about people. Life yeah. is about others lifting you up and uh, helping you along the way. And you know, I think that's a big thing. You know, for me that I've learned o- over the years. And what I try to do on the other side also is being part of that community and not trying to be separated from it. That's great. That's great. Well, thank you so much. I mean, yes, sir. Our, our, time's, our time's about up, but, but it was it was fantastic to, to, talking to you. Yes. And congratulations on the Emmy. Well, thank you. And thank you for jo- joining me with my friend uh, Richmond Weaver on Studying Your Way to Success. Great. Beautiful.